our program, From House to House. Won't you come in and join us for a while in the Word? We're continuing in this 12-part series that we have called, He is the Beautiful Bridegroom. Today will be our lesson number 10 of the 12, and we're going to be talking about, in particular, his countenance, as we see the portrayal of the bride in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 9 through 16. And she there is describing what he means to her how she sees him. And as we read these descri descriptions, we need to keep in mind that these are like photographs. These are word pictures. They are symbolical. And I'd just like to share with you some of the inspirations that these phrases have been in my own life personally. And I hope it will be an encouragement to you as well. No, Carol Brooke does not know it all. I've got a long ways yet to go. And I appreciate the inspirations that others receive as well, even from these very same texts. But I hope what has been put up on my heart will be of help to you in the Lord. If but to stimulate in you an appetite to want to know him even more and more. You know, the scripture says the path of the just is as a shining light that goeth more and more unto the perfect day. So as we receive Jesus Christ, the light of the world, into our life, it's like then our candle, which is the spirit of man, the scripture says, that is within the house of this body. It is ignited, but the light of that needs to expand and grow more and more and more unto the perfect day, as it says in Proverbs. So I hope that the things we share with you on this program we've called from house to house, that they are beneficial not only to challenge you and to inspire you, but to aid you in laying hold to some simple means of attaining, growing more in the Lord and expanding in that light of the knowledge of the things of God. Let me tell you this. After walking with the Lord these many, many years, you find that there is so much to the things of the Lord that you'll never exhaust it all. You'll never arrive to a plateau where you can say, well, now I've got it all in the bag, as we say it here in America anyway, that, that you have attained. Even Paul, in all the grandeur of his walk with the Lord and knowledge of the Lord, that he would write and teach us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he still said that he hadn't attained. He was still reaching forth to that which was Christ was offering him. And so we just hope that the Holy Spirit will use us somehow to be an aid as you are reaching forth to apprehend what Christ is apprehending you for. So today as we consider his countenance, we want to think about the kind of the total view of, of him as a person, especially the whole face. Because we've talked about, you know, we've talked about uh, the head, we've talked about the hair, we've talked about the eyes, you know, the mouth, many things we've talked about in particular. But this general thought of his countenance as a whole, as you look out upon another person, you say, well, their countenance is this or that. That's kind of what we want to consider in today's lesson, all right? Ladies, back again, Song of Solomon 5. I'm going to read from the King James as well as the Amplified. And we're going to look at verse 15 today as our backdrop for the other things we're going to branch out into. I do have a little more scripture today, so bear with me. It's very important to me that as I teach, I give to you the word because I know it's the solid rock upon which you can stand. When heaven and earth is passed away, his word will have not even passed away. When all else fails, the world will, word will stand like a solid rock. And so I'm very conscious, my friends, that as I bring to you the messages on from house to house, that I give you the word of the Lord. Because what I say, personally, my opinion isn't what holds up throughout eternity necessarily, but the word of God will. If nothing else, I hope to get you to get your nose in the book. Okay? Right. Song of Solomon 5, verse 15. And this is what she says in describing her beloved, the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, in a spiritual sense. His legs are as pillars of marble, set upon sockets of fine gold. 
We talked about that in our last lesson. Now, she says, his countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. And she's describing there an area in the Holy Land, the Lebanon mountain range, and the beautiful, beautiful grand cedars that cover like carpeting the sides of those mountains up and to the top. Ah, it's an awesome view, especially in the biblical days. Um, this place was so excellent in beauty with those towering trees. So this is what she likens his countenance to being, because if in that day you would happen to go to Lebanon and look upon it and see the beautiful greenery and the scenery there, you would be in such awe, you would be struck with awe. Well, the same way she feels about looking on her beloved's face as a whole. She says his countenance is just, it's like looking at Lebanon. In other words, it just puts you in awe. It sends you in rapture, in a sense, of, of the amazing glory and beauty of who he is. I have to say that after many years of walking with the Lord from a little child to my senior years, that I'm more in awe, as time goes on, of the countenance of my Lord, of who he is, what he is, what he has meant to me, what he has done for me, what he spared me of, what he has brought me through. And then with the grand expectation of what it will be like to be a part of his company throughout eternity with those that have accepted his plan of salvation by the mercy and the grace of his shed blood. All right, ladies, let's read it from the Amplified, same verse, 515. His legs are like strong and steady pillars of marble set up on bases of fine gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, excellent, stately, and majestic as the cedars. You see here, the King James uses the word countenance. The Amplified Version uses appearance. These are not contradictory. It just helps broaden our understanding. So either way, we're talking about his countenance. We're talking about if you looked upon him and you saw his appearance, and she said it reminds her of the grandeur of those mountains of Lebanon covered with these grandioso cedars. And uh, she says uh, they're, it, they're just excellent. They're stately. They're majestic, these cedars upon that mountainous range of Lebanon. Now, I couldn't help but think in preparing this particular lesson the Lord had put up on my heart of an old song we used to sing in the church. It was one of my favorites, even as a child. It, it, it gave me a de deeper yearning to not only know the Lord by the Spirit, but to look forward to that day when we shall be with him forever. Didn't he say before he departed that where he was going to go, we could also eventually come, that where he is, we may be also. I like to cleave on to that part. We're going to get to be with him no matter where he is. I don't care where he's going to be. You say, what planet is he going to be on? Where, where is heaven? So I don't care as long as I'm there with him. That's all that matters to me. But this old song that we used to sing was called, Oh, I Want to See Him. Can I read the words of that song to you? I hope you'll be blessed by them. And it's like this. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, Pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without, within. But my Lord leads me on, and through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him. He will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul and turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead and leads whate'er be tied. Then you go into the course, oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace, and on the streets of glory, just let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. The next verse is, when in valley, lo, I look toward the mountain height, and I behold my Savior there. He's leading in the fight. 
with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low, guiding me, I can see, as I onward go. Oh, I want to see him, is the chorus. Then the last one is, when before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark, he does safely keep. And he leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me. And oh, I love him so. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, just let me lift my voice. My cares will be all past, and I'll be home at last, and I'll be ever there to rejoice. I hope those words inspire some of you that maybe today, and particularly, you feel a little bit weary. Sometimes you wonder if you're going to make it to the finish line. But this is our blessed hope. And the scripture says, without hope, we will be as all men most miserable. So, child of God, God has given us a blessed hope. He's not given it to us as a means of escape from reality or the necessity or the responsibilities that he's put in our lap. But it is, as for him, it was on the cross. It said he endured the cross. How? Because he had a joy that was set before him. You and I, no matter what we go through on this world below, we can endure it if we keep our focus on the final outcome, uh, the final outcome and that is we will ever be with our Lord and participate in his kingdom. Ladies, turn with me quickly, and we've got a little bit of scripture to cover today, so please turn quick with, with me to Matthew 17, verse 1 through 2, and I want to bring in some other things the scripture says about his countenance, what it would be like to look upon the Lord's countenance in his glorified form. And it says, And after six days Jesus taketh, Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up unto a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. These three that were we call the inner circle of the twelve disciples and apostles, the Lord took them aside on special occasions, and they were privileged to see him transfigured before them, and his face... It looked like the shining of the sun. How powerful, how glorious, how radiant. And I think when the bride in the Song of Solomon is talking about how majestic is the appearance of his countenance, she, in a sense, by the Spirit is seeing the radiance of his, the glory coming out of his countenance. And in the Amplified, I want to read that as well. And again... It says, in six days after this, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and he led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and his appearance underwent a change in their presence, and his face shone clear and bright like the sun, and his clothing became as white as light again about his countenance. Turn quickly now to Luke, the ninth chapter, verse, 20, uh, verse 28 through 29 in the Amplified. And we're going to see again about his countenance and the privilege of seeing him as he really is in his glory. 